Hey guys, and welcome to this video taking a first look at a new upcoming feature for the fly-by-wire tablet, a muchly anticipated feature. This is the top of descent calculator that is now coming to be implemented in uh, the fly-by-wire tablet. Just before we go in and have a look at it, what I want to stress very severely is that this is not working VNAV. It has absolutely no control over the autopilot. It adds nothing to the flight management computer. It doesn't create a descent profile of any kind. Uh, it doesn't initiate your descent for you. It adds nothing to the navigation display, but it is a fantastic tool to help you as a pilot calculate your top of descent and how to perform the descent. So let's go in and take a look, shall we? So here is the fly-by-wire tablet, which many of you are now already familiar with. So if we come across here and select Tools, here is our brand new Top of Descent calculator. And I get asked all the time, how do I know when to start the Top of Descent? And up until now, I've been using a general rule of thumb um, to work that out whilst we've not got working VNAV. But now, I will start using this Top of Descent calculator. So let's go in and have a look at how it works. So at the moment you can see it is getting our current ground speed from the simulator. 431 knots, 431 knots on the ground speed just there so that matches up as it should. So how are we going to use this then to decide when do we need to start our top of descent? Well it's got lots of different options that we can use and that's great for us because we can manipulate this in uh, the way we need to for uh, any particular flight. So whether you're flying on VATSIM and say you need to be level at such and such by uh, such and such a waypoint, um, or if you're just flying on your own, um, you can target an altitude uh, for your airport, which is what we're gonna look at now. Now this is a very crude uh, demonstration here because I've got a target altitude of zero set there, so not very realistic, but just to show you how that would work. So we're currently at 30,000 feet, and if I wanted to target an altitude of zero, so getting to the airport, um, then our distance, vertical speed or angle fields can be populated here. So let's say we wanted to start our descent 100 miles away. What it would then do is it would tell us that at this current speed, at 30,000 feet, to be at zero feet by the time you've traveled 100 miles, you need to descend at an altitude, uh, uh, you need to descend at a rate rather, of 1,853 feet per minute, or at a descent angle of minus 2.8 degrees. Okay, so let's clear that. If we want to choose our own vertical speed for the descent, so maybe a nice, relaxing, steady, slower descent of 1,400 feet per minute, when that field becomes populated, it tells us, well, in that case, you need to start your descent about 132 miles before the target. We can also clear that. We can also um, choose our own descent angle. So if we decided to descend at about 3 degrees, we would need to start the descent 94 miles away from the target. Remember, if you're going to use a uh, degrees for your descent, then you need to come over here and change from heading and VS speed to track and FPA speed. Okay, so let's just come back over here and, uh, and clear that. Now, realistically, we wouldn't target an altitude of zero because that's not how we would do an approach. Ordinarily, what we would look to do is we would have our Navigraph charts and we would be targeting maybe a specific waypoint um, rather than the final airport itself. Um, so if we just come down here and have a look at our navigation computer, we're currently on approach here to Belfast. We're currently 208 miles away from Belfast. And if we scroll up, if you don't have access to any sort of navigation charts or anything like that, you will see that Microsoft Flight Simulator does put in constraints. So there's a constraint here as we get towards the Belfast VOR. And there's a constraint there of 2,500 feet. So that would be a better altitude to try and target. So we can pop that in here, 2,500 <coughs> feet. And again, you can choose how far away you would like to start that descent, or if you wanted to select a nice descent rate again, 
of about 1500 feet per minute. That is a very nice slow steady descent. So it now tells us that we need to start that about 116 miles away before the target. Well that's fine but how do we know when we are 116 miles away from the Belfast VOR? Unfortunately at the moment the flight plan in the McDo does not show us that information so we have to use a sort of other workaround for that and that is the use of the range rings here on the navigation display. Now the range rings can be changed up here so at the moment I've got it set out to the furthest but you can obviously bring that in like so and all we're going to do is just double check that again so about 160 miles away from the Belfast VOR which if we have a quick look and zoom in is actually in the middle of all this uh, all of these waypoints just here as I actually bring that in maybe one more you can see that they will obviously be then more spread out here on the navigation display as you zoom in so when you see the Belfast waypoint starting to appear at 116 miles so you can close to the 120 uh, dashed line around here that is when you would need to start your descent at a rate of 1500 feet per minute all right so that is a great way of looking at that another way of doing it is of course if you're planning an ILS approach most of the time you want to be if it's a normal standard ILS approach three degree angle etc normally you want to be aiming for an altitude of about 3,000 feet when you're 20 miles 15 to 20 miles away from uh, capturing the ILS uh, that ensures then that you capture the glide slope from below rather than trying to chase it all the way down so if we wanted to be at 3,000 feet by the time we are 20 miles away from the airport we could then do this so 30,000 feet we want to target 3,000 feet and still going to use that descent rate you know what actually we could probably increase that descent rate a little bit so slightly more realistic descent rate a vertical speed of 1,000 800 feet per minute <clears throat> so that is telling us we would want to start our descent about 95 miles before the target well if we want them to ensure that when we're 20 miles away from the airport we are at 30,000 feet what we can use is the distance that we have just here because the distance down here this is the distance from the uh, actual airport Belfast airport so we're currently 184 miles away from that so 3,000 feet 20 miles away from the airport that would be 95 plus 20 so 115 when this then says 150 miles away from Belfast that is when we would start to initiate descent and that would get us to 3,000 feet when we are 30 miles away from Belfast at the moment of course what you can also change oh, a little stutter in the simulator there what you can also change is the ground speed so at the moment this is getting its information from the uh, from the aircraft so 246 knots on the ground speed if you know or you get a speed restriction that you're going to be slowing down well then you can go to the manual input to change that so at the moment 95 miles go to a manual input just remove that last one there um, if we want to add 3,000 feet and a ground speed of uh, let's say 350 so now it's going to tell us we need to start our descent at about one uh, at about 88 miles away that would get us 3,000 feet so 88 miles plus 20 would give you the top of descent calculation to ensure that you're at 3,000 feet 20 miles away from your uh, from your airport to intercept your ILS now this target altitude I do have to stress the target altitude is barometric pressure altitude it is not radio altimeter so just to make sure we understand the two I've said we're going to target an altitude of 3,000 feet here well that's all well and good but if the airport that you're landing at is actually at an elevation of 2,000 feet above sea level you're only going to be 1,000 feet above the airport 
when you reach this altitude so again that's where knowing the elevation of the airport is very very important so if you are able to get charts to double check that then um, it's always a good idea but a strict rule of thumb you want to be 3,000 feet above the airport elevation for uh, starting your ILS approach when you're about 15 to 20 miles away so don't confuse both the barometric and the radio altimeter um, as both can uh, have disastrous consequences if you get them mixed up for example if you are flying into Innsbruck for example which is obviously quite high up so hopefully that's given you a little insight into how we can use the brand new top of percent calculator at the time of filming this video this is still in test phases so please don't contact fly by wire and ask them why is that not yet working as soon as it's released properly um, I'll update the video information so you'll be able to see that but for now just another great big shout out to the fly by wire team for giving us another piece of really useful technology that we can use in Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 to add some more realism to the way we uh, the way we work I'll certainly be using this tool in um, my upcoming streams if you have any questions please do uh, comment down on the video below give the fly by wire guys a uh, thumbs up and like the stream and uh, video for me that will be great and i look forward to using this brand new feature in upcoming videos thanks very much guys for watching thank you to fly by wire and i shall see you all again very soon bye bye for now